In this week's episode, I take my niece Letty to test drive the new Lost Village play area. Luckily, she gives it the green light. Fun rating? Fun rating, 10. 10. Give another 10. Later, Head of Ecology, Professor Tom Britton, shows Nesta how to do a vegetation survey for our rewilding project. So this is our recording unit. And Chris joins Ben for the day to help him pull a few weeds. But I'm not sure he's cut out for gardening. I don't know how you expected me to work in these conditions, really. What conditions? Outside. <laughs> Today, I'm here with my niece, Letty, and we are here to celebrate the grand opening of the Lost Village play area. Letty, have you heard about it? I have, and I've been to have a tiny look, but not a big one, so, so I'm very excited to go and see it. But you're here to perform a job. Yeah. Which is to give it a rating. I know, so I've got to give it a rating, a fun rating. So I have to go around on all the different play area things and I'll have to go and give it a rating out of 10. And look what we can see ahead of us. I know, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's all coming into view. This is the work of many people at Mapperton who've been involved. It was designed by Mick, but it was also worked on by Max, by Ben, and even Chris, who's behind the camera now. Chris, what did you do? I helped move some of the wood chip. So here it is the Lost Village play area. I think we should go on this little obstacle course here. We haven't come up with names for each of the features, but I think this one, basically, the fun is to walk along without falling off. I know, and you've, got, right? all, yeah, and you've got all these And you've got these sort of pads for jumping from one to another. What could be more fun I know, than, than playing hop and a skip from one of these to the next? And you could have so much fun playing multiple different games here. Okay, fun rating, I'd say it's gonna have a 8.5. 8. 8.5, 8. that's pretty fun, isn't it? My favorite bit, it's the picnic area. This is where you just get to sit and have your picnic. This is where mums and dads and other carers can sit and watch their children as they, Perfect. As they uh, play around. What do you think? I think it's absolutely amazing. Fun rating for this? I think maybe not for the little, no, not for the no, kids, not but for the parents, for I think this would be a 10. This would be a 10 for the they, parents. They could do everything Letty. they wanted here. It's a 10 for the parents, I totally agree. Now, this one, Letty, is definitely a bit older, isn't it? Yeah, this is definitely, I'd say, nowhere, no people under the age of like five should be coming on here. No one under the age of five, well. Unless they're yeah. real daredevils. You've got to be quite good at balancing, haven't you? Yeah. So what do you, what do, you do up there? Can you get on the very top one over there without falling off? Let's see. Oh, you see Letty has fantastic balance. I'm stuck, I need a hand. Give me a hand. I need a hand. Probably no running games, just in case you might fall off. Right. Because you don't want to fall off. Yeah, you don't want to fall this. off this one, do you? So I'd say this is more of like a cram. Is it? Um, is it good for scramble. jumping? Yeah, yeah, it's really it good. And I think this is for okay. people that like to so scramble. Okay, so rating, up. rating, out nine. of ten. Nine. Nine. Get a nine. This is one of my favourite features over here, Letty. I know this is. This is the animal brass rubbing circle. It's amazing. I mean. Have you done it yet? No, I haven't. I'll have to do it after this. So we've got to go and get some pieces of paper and some crayons. Yeah. And if we were to do that, we would be able to rub with our crayons. Yeah, you put the paper on, then yeah. you get your crayon and you just rub and it's got like badgers, herons, fox, yeah. so actually, mole. Fun feet, fun Fun uh, rating. rating, I give this like a eight. Eight? Yeah, mm. these, these are all scoring really highly. I know. I just think this is actually an amazing playground. I think it's so much fun. Right, we are now in the Lost Village itself. Look, someone's already been in here. Uh, somebody has been in there. Well, it's already been graffitied. Unbelievable, somebody it's has crazy. graffitied the Lost Village. Oh, that I didn't take there. long, they've, did it? They've done some maths. Oh, well, that's good, because that's the schoolhouse, yeah. isn't it? So that's what you do in the schoolhouse. Luckily, they've graffitied in chalk, so we ought to be able to get that off. I know, or we can just leave easily. it up there as, yeah. as, um, as something natural. Anyway, Amazing. that is obviously the church. Yes. You spend a lot of time in there, don't you, Letty? Yeah. Yeah. Not as much time as you spend in the schoolhouse, though. No. Is that right? 
yeah. because the old school hall was used for teaching. Yes. Um, and we still have the school hall up in the village. In among the lost village, we have some features and there will be more features coming over time. First off, Letty, you can drive a tractor. I know. Have you done it? This is... I, th I think I Leo, Leo's had a go, hasn't yeah. he? Look, you yeah. can even do some steering. There's so if some, you want to get your tractor training in, do you some, come here? There's some masterful chainsaw carving has been going on here. I know, it's really amazing. The, the grill of the tractor. But then look at the pig. Now the question is, is this sage or onion? I know, I wonder. I think that whoever it is, it's got some fabulous ears going on here. I know, I mean, it's look really got... I mean, who would have thought that tractor tires could be used so creatively? Over here, we've got some benches. Now, I don't know whether these are benches for clambering on or just for sitting. These are clamberable. Clamberable benches. And then you've got some quite cool swings. People may notice something here and they may say, well, it's all very well having a wild swing, but why is it plastic? Except if you do use something like wood and in this English English country weather, it could start rotting and that could be quite dangerous. Yeah, so it could start rotting, that is a good reason, but there's another reason which is it's much lighter. So if you're playing with a friend and that swings over and hits you, boom! It doesn't really hurt. No. Yeah. Now, and Letty, if you go that way, I know. then you're really, really high up in the air. You, well, the thing is, yeah. you're actually not that high because this swing, very smart because it's been put very low down. If these ropes were a bit heavier and I was a bit younger, I'd be on them with you. I know. Yeah. But um, fun rating? Fun rating, 10. 10. Get another 10. Letty, I think this could be one of my favourite features. I know. So we've got two swings here. Yeah, two different types of different swings. Different types of swings. Which one are you going to do? I think I'm going to try. You try that one? This one is probably for kids that are a bit smaller and a bit younger than me because I can't really lift my legs all the way up when I'm going. But it's still very fun to just yeah. swing on. Is it? I think I can it's even older. swing you on this one. Here you go. On you go. Right. You ready? Yes. Right. Higher? Yeah. Higher. Not higher than that. Whoa! Whee! What do you think? That's a proper swing, isn't it? Yeah, and this yeah. one's also made of plastic material. It so is. So if you do get hit, so that it's soft, be fine. And Letty, how's your swing technique? Because you're kind of spinning round at the moment. Was that what you're intending? No, not really. No. Okay. I think that brings out the fun of it. Yeah. 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 It's a kind of spinny swing. Right. While you're doing that one, I'm going to try this one. So, Letty, what's the technique for this one? Pull your knees up, pull your legs up, oh and God. hold on. This is sounding pretty terrifying. Right, ready, Chris? Has anyone got the first aid kit nearby? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, that was um, exciting. So, Letty, okay. what is your overall fun rating? My overall Go on, say fun it. rating. I'm going to have to do a drum roll. Do. Ten! Ten! <laughs> I, I just love this playground. I knew she was going to give it 10. Cause Hooray! It's for everyone. Well, I mean, parents would even enjoy it. We hope wherever you are in the world that you'll have a chance to come and visit the Mapperton Lost yeah. Village play area. You might find Letty playing here with her yeah, friends. Yeah, you might come and see me. And a huge thanks to everybody who's helped put this together. In particular, Mick, whose brainchild it was. And, um, and then obviously Ben and Max and Chris for all the wood chip. Hooray! So today I'm up at our rewilding project in Coatley called Mapperton Wildlands and I'm here with Professor Tom Brereton. Professor has a pretty fancy piece of kit. Um, Tom is our head of ecology here at Mapperton and today we're doing some surveying 
Um, so what exactly are we surveying here today? So we're going to survey the vegetation in quite a lot of detail and to do that we have a series of quadrats located across the, each field and the quadrats is a, like a one metre square right. patch of ground that we look at intensively. But the first thing to do is to uh, find those quad rats and to do that we need this uh, high powered GPS yeah. that gives us really accurate data down to just over 10 centimeters. Right, wow. So the first job is to, is to look at uh, Google Earth and all our sample locations yeah. and get to those points yeah. uh, with Google Earth and then, then get a really accurate fix on right. where we are with this uh, Bad Elf Flex uh, GPS yes. system. Yes, all right, well, let's go give it a go. Okay, follow me. So according to my Google Earth GPS and phone GPS, which is at accurate to about two or three meters, we're pretty much in the right spot for our first unbiased sampling location, one of these quad rats. So let's just put the sticks down now. Okay, so that's nice and square there. So this is our recording unit. Second thing to do is take a photograph. Yeah of the quad rat from above with with my phone and this is this is a uh, georeference so i can go back and uh, repeat this uh, experiment in the future yeah right the next thing to do is to put a put the gps in always in the southwest corner of the quad rat right that shield book there that's interesting see that there oh wow well, yeah Never oh, I've never seen that one. Before. Really metallic green triangle on the on the body. Yeah. It's amazing. It's this is it's fascinating what you see when you're yeah, the harvest spider as well. Yeah, when cool. you really yeah, and yeah. a ladybird as well. Yeah. yeah. One of the first things to say is what type of habitat it is, because we are sampling evenly the different types of habitat present within each field. Mm. This field is mostly lowland meadow or aspiring to be lowland meadow with with scattered bushes and trees over time and we can see here looking at it it's already quite rich yeah. already yeah. so first impressions are it's either semi-improved or agriculturally unimproved i mean this is already very good you can see there's lots of nectar sources yeah, yeah. in flower lots of herbs as well it's mostly broad-leaved herbs rather than grasses and the mix of species is mostly native ones rather than negative indicators yes. associated with agricultural improvement. We can see some of the residual plants of, associated with that. Here's the white clover here. So an abundance of that tells you that it was probably reseeded in the plast. Yeah. And when we look closely, we can see sort of ryegrass as well. Yeah. They're the last sort of... Uh, <laughs> the dying off elements yeah. that show you yeah. how the manage was how it was managed in the past yeah obviously it's really recovered quite nicely probably over the last 30 um, yeah. years or so so the next thing to do is we want to estimate the height of the vegetation right it's called the direct method <laughs> and you basically just use your hand there's that uh, look at the insects here coming oh, in yeah here. yeah amazing just teeming with life. Yeah. So yeah, so you put the stick down in the middle of the the quadrat and you look around and see what is the sort of the, the, the most frequent height, mm. the modal height. So it's about there. Yeah. So you put your hand down to there and you can feel some resistance from yeah. the vegetation. Yeah. So that's the height. Pull the stick up and the height is twenty one centimetres. Yeah. So the next attribute we're measuring gives us an indication of how valuable this patch is for pollinators. So it's the number of plant species that are in flower yeah. at this point in time. So we've got yellow that one. yellow one. Yep, and the yellow one all looks to be the same species. Quite a few of these dandelion types yeah. actually, but I think that's all the same one. Anything else? Would this thistle qualify? Yep, yeah, thistle, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this, this thing here used to be super abundant and still mm. is at Mapperton, but it's uh, one of those 
sort of wider countryside yeah, species that's yeah. really disappeared. Very impressive grasshopper there though. Oh yeah, 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 that's called a, yeah, it's, that's a female with a long ovipositor. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. the ovipositor at the back. That's the long-winged conehead, which is yeah. super, super abundant here in these damp, yeah. damp grassland areas. So this is a marsh thistle. And how come the um, thistle... Uh, I think that they are, again, they're very good yeah. for wildlife. They're really important for many insects, but the problem is they are invasive as well. Are so they, they, oh. left uncontrolled, they Didn't can they completely yeah. swamp uh, pastures. Yeah. So yeah. in moderation, they're good. The final measurement is to add up all the undesirables together, mm. give a composite measure. So we've got 2%. So again, that's, that, that's a that's good score. Good, yeah. Yeah. yeah, anything above five is generally bad. Yeah. So we're well within range. Yeah. So already this site's yeah. looking good. Yeah, it's, it's got a lot yeah. of nectar, no bare ground, yeah. and uh, very few negative yeah. indicators. Yeah, it's scoring pretty highly. So again, you've got to strip out in your mind thistles, creeping buttercup and white clover, yeah. and grasses, and estimate what's left these these plants here the yarrow yeah, the knapweed yeah. the autumn hawk bit what's the combined cover of all those plants together so it's certainly more than half yeah definitely lots of it maybe two th at least two thirds i would say possibly more i mean it's kind of all around the edges slows down a bit yeah i'd say i'd say 70. yeah, yeah. i think that's that's a pretty good shout actually i think we'll go with that 70 percent mm -hmm. So we've done all the broad measurements now. The final thing to do is, is a species list because that's a very important indicator. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is, we've got a yellow one, haven't we? And this is autumn hawk bit. Right. See this leaf here? Oh, yeah. Yeah, much broader leaf. Yeah. This is called common cat's ear. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we've goodness. got ribwort plantain, which is pretty much in every single quad rat. Mm. It's a real constant in these habitats good indicator of flower rich grassland we've got the black knapweed which is one of our yeah. nectar plants yeah actually right on the borderline we've got another plant in flower yarrow so yeah. i should just uh, upgrade that okay so i think we're about finished eight to fifteen is class of semi-improved yeah. grassland here we've got 14 14 which is what you what it feels like it feels yeah. like good quality semi-improved yeah, semi grassland yeah. in very good condition yeah. no yeah. negative indicators hopefully in a year or two we can it'll, it'll go well we know exactly where we are rich. so yeah, exactly, yeah. you know we it's are close. we can come yeah. back and see if this has been maintained or yeah. improving if the white clover is reducing in cover if the creeping mm. buttercups going down good i hope, hope that gives Great. you an insight yeah so yeah, uh, definitely on to the yeah. next one on to the next one <laughs> And I think the thing that's great about these quadrats is it's something you can do quite easily at, at home. I mean, of course, we have this piece of kit, but if you, you know, put some sticks down in, in, in each corner in theory, you know, you could, you could do this yourself and come back year on year um, and see, see how much your garden is improving. That's a good point. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, it's amazing how many species there are. You kind of overlook it just as you're walking past, but when you actually kind of look at it for i don't know how long we've been mm. uh, 20 minutes or something yeah all these different species come up um but yeah let's um move on to the next one come on yes, i know <laughs> i know yes She's like, yes, Chris, you need to start the Hello. video. So we got to start the video. He's like, Chris, you start the video. It's been a while since we've been on camera together, I think. Yeah, you've been away, haven't you? I've been away in Scotland, and you've been doing the play area. So, <laughs> I've come back, and I wanted to catch up with Ben, because I wanted to see what he's been up to. Occasionally, I do help him out. Help him out. Yeah, it's a bit <laughs> like that. Yeah, it's a bit like that. But Yeah, I mean, I'm in so much use as Tika right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. what are you doing, Ben? I've come back just, just, and I've come to help. Just pulling ragwort again, to be honest, Chris. Pulling ragwort. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's not overly exciting, but it's not a glamorous it's, job, is it's it? It's just one of those things that you see. You got some nice gloves, though. So you guys have probably seen what ragwort is when you saw Luke pulling it and Claire 
and some of the volunteers were pulling ragwort. So we're in a wildflower meadow where you probably saw Julie picking some flowers and she made that bouquet of flowers. I want people to actually think I, I work for a living. Obviously not, you're just spending all your time talking at the camera now. It's this yellowy stuff and it's poisonous for who? Uh, all the animals, is that, is that, it's, it's only poisonous when it's cut and dead. This field's going to be cut for hay, so. Okay. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Come on, down again. I don't know about Ben, but I reckon this is kind of finished. You know, I'm pretty bored of it now. You know, it's nice to be outside for five minutes, but. <laughs> what are you doing? Come on. I feel like we've been here a long time. Because you've been chatting. I'm going chatting. on about Barbie. Chatting about Barbie. Chatting about Barbie. I don't think I was born for manual labor. No, I don't think you were either. <laughs> How many bits do you actually think you've put in the bag? <laughs> How many bits do I think I've put in? Two. Like 30? 35 maybe? What's worse? Me building a fence or me pulling ragwort? Both. There's so much walking involved in being outside. I'm sure this is why they invented cars, bikes, segways. Make sure the camera gets this. I, I want them to know I'm actually working. I work so hard. <laughs> Hello. Hey guys. What are they up to? They're just chilling. Well, hello. Oh. <laughs> hello. Hello. Oh. Hello, Baz. That's Basil. Look at you two. You're basically their dad, then. Basically. Hello. <laughs> that is amazing. Hello. Hello. Oh, oh that's it. Well oh, done. I've made that one run away. You upset the baby. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're not so bad, though, are you? Oh, oh there we go. Hello. Oh, this one doesn't know what to think of me yet. It's nah, okay. It's unsure. Well, that's it. I'm getting a pig. <laughs> and off they go. I think that's it, Ben. Call it a day. Off we go. Off we go.